This is the Motorola Edge 40 disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. As always, first the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at that. Next, heat needs to be applied to the back plate to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the plastic back plate. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and prying them off. So you won't actually have to disassemble the phone to replace those. There are 17 Phillips screws which need to be removed. There are some antenna lines drawn on this plastic cover, which are the light gray color lines. The NFC antenna is located here, and the wireless charging coil is located here. Looking at the other side, we can see a large area of graphite film to help transfer heat. There is some more graphite film over the motherboard and the connectors, which needs to be peeled off, but before we can do that, we'll have to lift it over and disconnect the battery cables, and remove the secondary board so we can peel it off and remove it. There's a secondary microphone on the small board, and this board also controls the LED flash on the back. There are two coaxial cables on the bottom right side of the board, which need to be disconnected by just popping them off. Also, the copper tip covering the front facing camera connector needs to be peeled off so we can disconnect and remove that. Here's a better look at the 32 megapixel front facing camera. Taking a closer look at the main board, there's a 50 megapixel primary camera and a 13 megapixel ultra wide lens. The primary camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. The connectors for the camera can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's another microphone on the top corner, a liquid damage indicator sticker, which is the white sticker over here, and some copper tape over the shields to help transfer heat. The proximity sensor is located on the other side, as well as more graphite film and copper tape on the back shields and some thermal paste. Once the copper tape has been peeled back, we can see more thermal paste on top of the RAM and processor, as well as these chips. To remove the battery, there are no pull tabs provided to help us pry it off, so we'll need to use some isopropyl alcohol and apply it to the sides of the battery and let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute 
so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off. Here's a better look at the 4400 milliamp hour battery. Once the battery has been removed, we can see the flex cable for the screen, which is routed through an opening in the mid frame. So if you needed to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, the screws on the top plastic cover and the cover itself. You'd have to disconnect the battery cables and the screen cable from the main board. And then you'd power off the battery, giving you access to the screen cable. At which point you would heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then you'd pry the old screen off, and then you'd apply a new adhesive and reapply the new screen, making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the mid frame and reassemble the phone. There's also an antenna line drawn on this bottom plastic cover. This flex cable connects the main board to the sub board, as well as the sim reader board. There are two more Phillips screws which need to be removed. Here's a better look at the SIM reader board. And here's the SIM reader itself on the other side. On the subboard or charger port board, we can see the primary microphone underneath the shield and the charger port itself with a red rubber gasket around it. Looking at the other side, we can see another liquid damage indicator sticker, which is that white sticker. In order to remove the bottom speaker, the flex cable for it needs to be gently peeled off from the frame. Here's a better look at the bottom speaker. This speaker has little white foam balls, which make it sound larger than it actually is. For anyone who's worried about puncturing the microphone or the filter for the microphone, you don't need to worry since both the filter and the microphone itself are seated above the hole. So if you accidentally insert the SIM ejector tool inside of the wrong hole, there's no way you'd actually damage it. The same goes for the one on top. There's also a mesh filter over the opening for the speaker on the frame. The vibrator motor and fingerprint sensor are both held in place with some adhesive. Once the flex cables have been peeled back, we can see a 3D layer of graphite which runs underneath the battery as well as the motherboard. So there's no vapor chamber on this phone. However, the 3D layer of graphite still helps to transfer heat. The flex cable for the volume keys and power button is right out through an opening in the mid-frame, so if you need to replace that, you'd actually have to pry the screen off as well. The top of your piece speaker is located here, which is also held on with some adhesive. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 4.5 out of 10. Now it's time to reassemble the phone.
Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Clip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.